Welcome back, space enthusiasts. Can NASA make oxygen on Mars? Today, we'll unveil a game-changing breakthrough. Mars colonization dreams have been constrained by limited resources, especially oxygen, but NASA is on the brink of something extraordinary. In this video, we'll explore the revolutionary technology and science behind NASA's mission to produce oxygen on Mars. This breakthrough could redefine the future of space exploration. Before we dig in, please support our channel by liking this video and hitting that subscribe button. We've got more captivating space content coming your way. When considering the prospect of establishing a telescoping base on the moon, not to mention Elon Musk's persistent ambitions to colonize Mars, we confront the notion of making another planet habitable. NASA's Project MOXIE, which accompanied the Mars Perseverance rover, has recently yielded promising results by demonstrating the capability to generate oxygen from the Martian atmosphere. This topic is undeniably intriguing as it prompts us to ponder how humanity might truly survive on another celestial body. To explore this, let's delve into the historical background and the present technological advancements. The Martian atmosphere predominantly comprises carbon dioxide, about 95%, and nitrogen, around 3%, with only trace amounts of oxygen. To thrive and explore Mars, we must devise methods to ensure our survival. While one might instinctively consider drawing lessons from the International Space Station, ISS, as a logical starting point, we must understand why this might not be as straightforward. To comprehend this, let's begin with the first level, often called the take-it-with-you approach. The concept of sustaining life in confined environments dates back to ancient history, such as Alexander the Great's ventures in a glass barrel, which held a fixed amount of air at normal pressure without the ability to replenish or purify it. As one breathes, the available oxygen slowly transforms into carbon dioxide, eventually rendering the air unbreathable. Interestingly, historical accounts mention animals like roosters, cats and dogs accompanying Alexander with the cat serving as a rebreather to cleanse the atmosphere, although this may be a somewhat embellished aspect of the story. This leads us to the second level. Take it with you and clean it. The longest publicly known submarine mission carried out by the Royal Navy's Valiant Class submarine HMS Warspite lasted 111 days. The ISS, on the other hand, has been continuously operational for over two decades. Both systems rely on interconnected mechanisms. The Water Reclamation System, WRS, and the Oxygen Generation System, OGS, to maintain a sustainable supply of breathable oxygen for extended durations. The Water Reclamation System, WRS, extracts water from various sources, including urine, condensation, and humidity, and purifies it into potable water, despite the initially unappetizing origins of the source. A portion of this water is diverted to create breathable air through electrolysis. With the OGS running an electric current through the water to produce hydrogen and oxygen. However, the challenge arises with the handling of flammable hydrogen, which cannot be vented in space. To avoid this, hydrogen is recycled, combining with waste carbon dioxide to create water, methane, and heat. While water returns to the system, methane currently serves as a waste product vented into space. On Earth, we usually think of keeping molecular systems topped up, H2O gases, for cooking and food. In space, the focus shifts to maintaining an adequate supply of essential atoms, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, that can be assembled into needed molecules. This highlights the uniqueness of space environments, where even seemingly wasted products like methane play a role. However, these level two systems are tethered to Earth, requiring periodic resupply to prevent resource depletion. This limitation led to the idea of level 2.1. Take it with you, clean it, and bring a high-density resupply method. An example is the solid fuel oxygen generators used on the ISS by the Russian Space Agency, involving powdered sodium chlorate and iron canisters heated to produce oxygen. In a mishap in 1997, one of these canisters accidentally ignited on the Russian space station Mir. Yet, the inherent limitation remains. These systems depend on periodic resupply from Earth. Now moving to level 3, or make it when you get there, NASA's Perseverance rover, which landed on Mars in 2021, features MOXIE, Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment. MOXIE heralds a shift towards self-sufficiency 
by leveraging the Martian environment. Unlike the ISS, Mars lacks an easily accessible water source for oxygen production. Consequently, MOXIE employs a process called solid oxide electrolysis, which resembles the reverse operation of a fuel cell or combustion. It operates by drawing in the Martian atmosphere through a filter with a scroll compressor, pressurizing it to around half an Earth's atmosphere. This pressurized carbon dioxide, CO2, is then subjected to solid oxide electrolysis, yielding oxygen. In essence, MOXIE exemplifies living off the land by utilizing the molecular composition of Mars to create a livable environment for humans, while the ISS relies on external resupply. MOXIE pioneers the concept of self-sustenance by converting local resources into breathable air. The core of MOXIE's operation lies in its electrolyzer, a component where an electrochemical process occurs at the cathode to generate pure oxygen. This process takes place at an extremely high temperature of 800 degrees Celsius, necessitating an intricate thermal isolation system, which includes preheating the input gas and cooling the exhaust gas. The reason for MOXIE's gold color is to mitigate the heat generated during operation from interfering with the other instruments aboard Perseverance. As a result of this process, carbon monoxide and unused CO2 are produced. However, a significant limitation is the risk of coking, where the remaining carbon can adhere to the device, causing rapid instrument degradation. Over the past two and a half years, MOXIE has been actively operating and has produced approximately 100 to 122 grams of oxygen. To put this into perspective, this amount is roughly sufficient to keep a small dog alive for around 10 hours. While this might seem modest, it's more substantial than it appears. Moxie wasn't continuously active during this period, being turned on and off for short intervals, usually every couple of months, with an average production rate of about 6 grams of oxygen per hour and a peak rate of 12 grams per hour. For comparison, while watching this video, you're probably consuming around 10 grams of oxygen per hour, assuming you're not engaged in strenuous physical activity. The limited oxygen production is mainly due to the substantial energy required to break apart CO2 molecules. And the Perseverance rover's power supply, powered by radioactive decay heat, can only provide slightly over 100 watts. Most of this energy is allocated to running other experiments to achieve more significant oxygen production in the future a much larger power source will be necessary. One of the primary challenges for in-situ resource utilization systems that employ CO2 is the molecule's inherent stability. CO2 is a molecule that demands substantial energy to decompose or dissociate, while MOXIE's solid oxygen electrolysis cells are robust. They are notably energy inefficient and rely on limited and costly rare earth metals to function effectively. Furthermore, the Martian atmosphere poses additional challenges. These cells perform optimally at high temperatures and pressures, which starkly contrasts with the Martian environment, necessitating the use of a compressor and an 800-degree oven to facilitate their operation. Looking ahead, a potentially more efficient approach on Mars could be low-temperature plasmas. To extract oxygen from CO2, it's necessary to introduce sufficient energy into the molecule to destabilize it. This can be achieved through various means, such as electron impact, high temperature heating to induce collisions and atom displacement, or shaking the molecule apart. In the case of CO2, encouraging vibrations within the molecule can lead to its spontaneous decomposition. Importantly, it's approximately 10 times more energy efficient to excite the internal vibrations of a molecule, rather than attempting to directly split it apart via methods like electron impact. Electrons can be harnessed to create low-temperature plasma in a gas by applying an electric field. This energy is then directed into the vibrational states of gas molecules, exciting them. This process only ionizes a small fraction of the gas molecules. To avoid delving too deeply into the exchange of vibrational quanta, it's worth noting that when many CO2 molecules that are vibrating asymmetrically come together, a fascinating phenomenon occurs. Molecules with slightly different energies interact, and the energy of this interaction is preferentially added to the higher energy molecule, causing its vibrational amplitude to increase significantly. Simultaneously, the less energetic molecule reduces its amplitude. As this process continues, the highly pumped up molecules with elevated amplitudes spontaneously dissociate, 
resulting in the production of carbon monoxide and atomic oxygen. Low-temperature plasmas thus offer an efficient means of converting electrical energy into chemical energy. This concept of using plasmas to decompose CO2 is actively explored on Earth, motivated by the challenges of climate change. However, executing this process on Earth is particularly challenging due to the planet's ambient temperatures and pressures. The collision of electrons occurs frequently and presents difficulties in accelerating them to the required energies. In contrast, the atmospheric pressure on Mars, approximately 150 times lower than Earth's, creates an ideal environment for plasma operation. The Martian atmosphere is also much colder than Earth, which benefits the up-pumping mechanism and slows down the recombination of carbon monoxide and oxygen into CO2, rendering the heating step of solid oxygen electrolysis unnecessary. Consequently, these low-temperature plasma systems can function with significantly lower energy requirements. While lab-based experiments have aimed for around 25 watts of continuous operation, these developments may be pivotal for the deployment of scalable in-situ resource utilization technologies on Mars, achieving continuous production of consumable oxygen and usable fuel directly from the Martian atmosphere is a crucial step toward enabling human missions to Mars and the long-term sustainability of a Martian colony. If you're interested in our scientist-themed t-shirts in the style of rock metal band shirts, you can find them in the description below. Thank you for bearing with my slightly husky voice during this episode, and I appreciate your viewership. Until next time, farewell. In the quest to make Mars hospitable for humans, NASA's MOXIE project marks a colossal leap forward. This breakthrough unlocks the potential to generate oxygen on the Red Planet, heralding a new chapter in space exploration. As we conclude this video, the vision of a future Mars colony becomes more tangible. The path to interplanetary life is paved with innovation and determination, and this accomplishment brings us one step closer to fulfilling that dream. Stay tuned for more updates as we continue to unravel the mysteries of our universe and push the boundaries of human exploration. The Martian horizon beckons and the possibilities are limitless.